My name is Miguel Connor, your pompadus of gnosis and smell of colitas rising up through the air of a world gone mad by the flatulence of a creator god gorged with the stolen dreams of the eternal realm. Yes, back to reincarnation. Does it happen? According to Stephen Secularius, it does indeed. He'll be discussing at the Virtual Alexandria his book, Reincarnation Can Be Proven, an overview of Matthew Franklin Whittier's return as the author, Stephen Secularius, and a look at Whittier's secret literary legacy. Stephen will take us on a fascinating yet sober journey on how he discovered he was Matthew Franklin Whittier providing you with the techniques and insights on how you can perhaps access your past lives. We speculate on this and everything else because we are Gnostic-minded. As we run with those searching for the truth and avoid those who have found it. What is it to transcend? To recognize nothing is true and everything is permitted. But did the Gnostics believe in the transmigration of the souls? As always, it's complicated and so different from all other faiths. But we can certainly say they viewed any reincarnation as part of the machinery and machinations of the Archons. Eternal forgetfulness, blue-pilling the divine spark of every being across the multiverse. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. The earliest form of reincarnation in Gnostic lore, if you don't include the cult of Orpheus, is with the father of all heresies and Gnosticism himself, Simon Magus. In the Simonian myth, Faust, as he sometimes was called, was God incarnate, traveling across history in search of Helen, or his first thought and co-creator. Helen was kidnapped by renegade, Epstein-like angels at the beginning of time and hidden in the world of forms, forced to reincarnate in various meat sacks, including Helen of Troy. Simon eventually found Ellen, and their union not only symbolizes the completion of humans after long quests through birth and rebirth, but the individuation of the divine in its process of self-discovery. By the power of truth, I, while living, have conquered the universe. Personal motto? From Faust. That's about trying to cheat the devil, isn't it? Later Gnostic sages would provide their versions of reincarnation. In the second century, Basilides of Alexandria taught that Gnosis was the climax of many lives of effort, indicating a Gnostic version of karma. For example, he said, quote, Men suffer from their deeds in former lives. Everybody's hell is different. It's not all fire and pain. The real hell is your life gone wrong. His contemporary, Carpocrates of Alexandria, believed in the transmigration of souls, but very differently from Basilides. Claiming that humans could not escape the Ouroboros until they underwent every physical experience possible and became wary of the material world. Later, the Persian Mazdakites and Frankian Jews would take up this libertine vibe. Have you ever been in a, in a Turkish prison? The Sethian, the secret book of John, has a theology that echoes the Eastern Bodhisattva vow. Jesus explains to the Apostle John that human souls are recycled by the Demiurge, constantly thrown into... Quote, forgetfulness in prisons. Jesus further says that to escape, the soul needs to quote, 
follow another soul in whom the spirit of life dwells because she is saved through the spirit then she will never be thrust into flesh again I reveal myself to myself and I am drenched and purged other Gnostic texts like Zoroastrianos and the Pista Sophia talk about forms of reincarnation in the flesh or in other dimensions with pit stops in temporary heavens or hells always in a long saga of perfecting Gnosis interestingly the Gospel of Thomas provides a passage that alludes to the potential of past life recollection. It goes, When you see your likeness, you are happy. But when you see your images that came into being before and that neither die nor become visible, how much will you bear? If I'm not me, who the hell am I? The Manichaeans universally believed in reincarnation. And against the Manichaeans, Augustine's description of the Manichaean attitude on reincarnation is similar to the Hindu concept of spirits transmigrating into life forms other than human. Augustine wrote, quote, They believe that the herbs and the trees are alive, and the life that is in them is endowed with sensibility and able to suffer when hurt. This is why no one can severe or pluck anything without inflicting suffering upon it. Gee, those world-hating Gnostics seem always to be so eco-friendly, I keep saying. Gosh, Anti-cosmic dualism just has a way of bringing out, well, cosmic empathy. But whatever. We're all in it together, kid. Except for the Mandeans, who divorced the notion of reincarnation centuries ago, we can go on and on with Gnostic attitudes on reincarnation. From the Valentinians to the Yazidi, to the Cathars, to the Sufis, to the Ismailis, to the Lurianic Kabbalists, and so forth. The difference from other faiths is the Byzantine structures that just don't go forward, but back and beyond and out and into a million worlds in that almost endless game of Saturn. You see, to be quite frank, Kevin, the fabric of the universe is far from perfect. It was a bit of a botched job, you see. We only had seven days to make it. But what did you expect? It's a busy universe out there. You are the final authority of your own soul journey through the spheres. And, finally, the Black Iron Prison is a shitshow maze to navigate. <laughs>